and that's the thing about swim run. You get another element. You get much closer to nature. You can go. It's what most people say about swim run. And I agree to that. You can go wherever you want to go. And that uh, feeling of nothing stopping you. You can you come to the water and you just keep going. <laughs> Hi boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 105 of the show. And essentially the third year of the podcast. The How start of year it? three for yeah. 20, first episode of 2022. Yeah. How LFG. You, How are you feeling about it? Let's put another 52 in the bank. <laughs> Just load plus, in the backpack. Plus the, plus, plus the gear talks. Let's do plus it. Plus the gear talks. But I'm very excited yes. about the guests to open up this yes. year. Yes. So we're kicking off. 2022 with an amazing guest on the show this week we have the uber talented endurance athlete marika wagner on the show we you're we're huge fans of her feats of endurance and we're super stoked to start off our third year of the podcast with her on the show this was this was pretty cool yeah it's great i mean like save basically it. an save rei it. commercial yeah is her life <laughs> yeah but, but more it. yeah more later <laughs> more later don't spoil it but first the training update so it's official it the low type boys. We are. We're. We've started our march towards Atala Catalina. Now, just only eleven weeks out. So we've heard already from so many people that are going to be there and are probably kicking off your training this week or the next couple of weeks or have already started. And we commiserate with we're, you. Yes, we're with you now, <laughs> and we will. You'll probably see us pick back up on the Instagram stories as well when we do our swim runs or trail runs. We'll try to get that content going. Make sure you're following us over there, but. We have raced the course before, so we know what's in store for us. Uh, and I know, we both know, it's hills. Yeah. Nothing but hills. So I... Yeah, ramping up the volume on a, on multiple d- on levels. M- multiple <laughs> levels. Elevation gain, mileage gain. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. And I'm like, I feel like you know you're ready to kind of get back into it when you're kind of like craving like a, yeah. a, a big workout or like feeling sore and stuff so i'm i'm ready to go so i'm i'm excited yeah and it's like and thinking about it it's like i don't know if you know having raced it before it's obviously helpful yes but it's also like we we know we know what's coming <laughs> we know what's coming and i mean so this is sort of how we operate a little bit when we go on our runs it's like if there is an option to get more up more elevation that's the way we go and i just yeah. Started off January 1st, got out there, did my Mount Burdell loop. Uh, and there's this way that goes down that I don't know how much it adds. And I'm like, yep, yep. I'm adding this. I'm adding this Get little loop road. To, yep. to climb up a bigger, <laughs> longer climb. Um, so that's just how everything's going to be. It's like, yeah, if there's quads, a hill, let's Quads take it. of steel is what we're going to try to And then also, have. yeah, blasting those downhills too. Definitely. So. Definitely. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah. Anyway, on to this week's shout outs. Yeah, so this week we're shouting out the country of Belgium. Oh. They recently cracked the top 10 in terms of downloads by country, and we're stoked on that. So thanks nice. for checking out the show, or um, Haltelik Pedank. You know, I was going to say that. And I will you say... Try? You want to try it? No, I can't. I was going to say one Belgium thing that I've started dabbling in is... Chocolate? Uh, mayonnaise with French fries. Oh, right? a little aioli, if it's aioli, yeah. actually, it's the I'm, same thing, bro. I it's not in my head. I have a lot of hangups well, about this. You say this. whatever you needed to tell yourself, but it's the same damn thing. So the Belgians, uh, that and they, a lot of good cyclists come out of Belgium. So I've been on the mayonnaise and French fries kick for before it was cool. Okay, well that's all you, man. <laughs> I'm I'm getting there. I'm trying to get there. Now on to this week's feats of endurance. So. This is an award that we give out, and this week we have two <laughs> two winners because yeah. we can just do that sort we of can thing. Just do whatever we want. First up is Victor Rosario. He posts a workout from Puerto Rico. That's all you got to do. Automatic win. We've mentioned this before on some episodes. If you post a workout from uh, Chris's home country of Puerto Rico, automatic selection, automatic winner. Congratulations on that, Victor. And then we have another award going to a Bay Area local. Brian Ramirez for his headland run on New Year's Day. So Chris is over in the headlands. Yeah. And when I got to the top of Burdell, I looked over at where that was and I waved. Yeah, it was I don't think pretty you saw far. Me. I could feel you. Our, the psychic tether could feel but you. But Brian ran by Chris and it was reported to me, quote unquote, cat called at him. 
Yeah, yeah. So, on so, the um, so I kick off my year running my favorite trail in the Bay Area called the Ninja Loop. Mm-hmm. Probably heard me talk about it before. And I was coming sort of the last little part, SCA, if you know what I'm talking about. Back to back, headed back to the car. Exactly, yep. exactly. And uh, you know, people are running the other direction, and this this guy passes me, and he looked kind of familiar, but I had my glasses on, so I was just kind of doing my thing. And you know, this type of run, you always try to do a flur, you know, finish with a flourish because you just have that crazy downhill that you try just not to die. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you ran, and this dude ran by, and he was like, "Low tide, boys!" Wow. So all I could muster was like a hell yeah, and then I just kept running. Nice. But with the you know with the miracles of Strava, I was able to figure out who it was. You did that. The, yeah. The flyby. Yeah, we chatted, and it was uh, super cool of him. And yeah, it's it's so it's always nice to see people out on the trails. Awesome. So be like Victor and Brian, and head on over to Strava. Search Low Tide Boys. And join all the swim runners and other people who want to identify and associate themselves with low tide boys on Strava. As they train for swim runs, live running, everything, hikes, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Now, we normally be going into this week in swim run, but yeah. we're on a hiatus. We're taking a couple weeks taking off. Taking a couple weeks off. The media department's on vacation. A little PTO. There's some, uh, you know, we're fielding a couple takeover bids from multiple... Yeah. Allegedly. TMZ. TMZ. BuzzFeed. What a- a- AOL. TikTok. Online. I don't know. I'm, is, we're uh, making all is, this up. Is Huffington Post still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> GeoCities wants, oh, wants to buy this yeah. week in Summer Run segment. So we're we're taking a week, a few weeks for this one. <laughs> uh, but on to next week. And if you really want to hear the theme song, it is, um, we'll, we'll just link it. We'll link the YouTube video in the show notes if you, you if you just want to hear this theme song. Now, I'm going to keep going. Let's do it. I'm going to keep going roll, because we're going to go to the Low Tide Boys updates. So, you've heard us many times before. We have re-architected our Patreon setup. And we have a bunch of folks supporting us there already. So, we want to make sure that we can do something to kind of give back. And we feel that that's a really big part of kind of the Swim Run community. So we are hosting our first Low Tie Boys Patreon exclusive meetup. It's scheduled for January 22nd at 4 p.m. Pacific time That's on the a left Saturday. coast. It's a Saturday. Thank you, Chris. Mm-hmm. You got gear questions. You got race questions. You got life questions. You just want to have a beer with the Low Tide Boys over Zoom and some other people. Make sure you're a Patreon member yeah. and then jump on to this party. On January 22nd, Saturday, 4 p.m. Pacific. Head on over to patreon.com slash lowtideboys if you want to learn more, or it's the info's on our site as well. Yeah. Now for this week's interview with Marika Wagner. Yeah, so it was like, I mean, it was so much fun to chat with with Marika. We've been following her her on her on Instagram pretty much since we launched the meme account. And to call her her endurance exploits, you know, quote unquote, impressive, really doesn't do justice to how versatile of an athlete she is. I mean, she calls herself an adventure racer, and honestly, that's probably the best way to describe what her exploits entail. Um, Anyway, she's awesome. In this interview, we chatted with her about her endurance background, how she found swim run, what keeps her motivated to try new feats of endurance, Mm -hmm. and um, and sort of what adventures in her future. We loved her candor and sort of confirmed our longstanding opinion that swim runners are just some of the best human beings. Yeah, and I honestly, absolutely, you know, I'm just bringing this up right now, but she should probably get like the she should be in the feats of endurance Hall of Fame. I think we should oh like just a shoe in. I think so. I mean, bait. It doesn't seem that there's any sort of endurance activity that if someone proposed to her, I feel like she would be first fit yeah. enough to finish in the tip top. Yeah, without without finish. without spoiling it, you'll hear in the interview she's like some of the stuff athlete. she's up to. But if you don't follow her on Instagram, you definitely should. I mean, she was just biking like a hundred kilometers in the deep in the snow. snow or something. It was <laughs> six crazy. Degrees. I don't even. She's know. She's amazing. She's yeah. amazing. She is incredible, and we love this conversation. And I can't think of a better way to kick off year three of the show yes so without further ado let's jump into it with marika okay all right all righty then (laughs) we are super stoked to start the third year of the Low Tide Boys, the Swim Run Podcast, with 
the one and only Marika Wagner. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're big fans of yours. And, you know, I think to introduce you to our American audience and people around the world, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what is it that drives you? You do adventure racing, you do swim run, you do mountain biking, you do cross country. I mean, there isn't a sport I don't think that you don't do. What is it that drives you um, to do so much endurance activities and race at such a high level? Um, first of all, thank you uh, about the fan uh, thing. It's so weird to hear someone say they're a fan of yours. But um, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. It's um, uh, it's fun. It's great. Um, what drives me? Um, of course, I've got these questions uh, in the past and I haven't always had a good answer, but I think I've came closer to that answer myself because it's interesting to look into yourself and see what actually drives you. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes I surprise myself when I do stuff. But I think for me, it's always been about curiosity. Um, curiosity about new things. Um, I'm, I really enjoy learning new things and uh, getting into the details in technique to get better and um, not the prestige uh, itself, more the actual doing of a new sport uh, and mm -hmm. developing the skill. Um, and also, I think in these long endurance races, what's, uh, what I find the thrill of it, it's that it takes all of you. Uh, you really need to uh, put all your skills and know, uh, knowing into it, um, all your physics, um, everything you know about training and uh, nutrition and pacing and teamwork, uh, not to forget. And I think when all, when it gets really long, all of that comes together um, in a, point where you need to bring it all mm -hmm. uh, uh, really put all of you together to achieve what you want to achieve i mean so I like that. yeah i mean that's that that makes a lot of sense but that, let me ask you a follow-up question to that so wh where where did this where did this start to start when you were young like um growing up in sweden playing sp sort of team sports or 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 because wh where was sort of the root of this fire because could it Everything you just said could have just been about like reading books or you know or playing <laughs> board games. So why endurance sports? Why why these intense endurance challenges? Uh, I think it's uh, it's about the complexity of it. Uh, like learning one certain skill wouldn't be complex enough. I think it's the, <laughs> when the mind and the body comes together. Uh, in endurance sports, something special happens. Um, but no team sports when I was growing up. Um, I did a lot of uh, different endurance, endurance sports, but nothing for a really long time and nothing uh, on a competing level. Um, not for, for as long uh, that it would count. <laughs> Um, but I was out a lot, uh, more adventures than sports when I was growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I could take my bike and just go ride all day and um, just being out and about and not always uh, very, my parents weren't always very happy with that, but I think <laughs> they also trusted me. <laughs> so yeah, I could go out in the woods and just go far uh, okay. just to see I love it. where so I'd end up. Uh, and I tried I tried a lot of different sports, but uh, yeah, never never stuck until I started with triathlon uh, mm. as somewhere in the late uh, teenage years or when I was almost grown up. <laughs> so it sounds like the bike was like a way to like really unlock this new world of just exploring for you, and then it. 
and you could just go like you said you could just go forever and kind of explore so i'm i'm hearing a lot of you know the childlike curiosities that everybody has of when you know when someone's a little kid they just go off and go pretend and have fun and go on adventures um without so much about oh are we are we on the course or or things like that so i i hear the, i hear the underlinings of of that for you um in your youth there uh uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just never stopped that childhood curiosity. Yeah, um, we're. I see here that you were first introduced to swim run by one of the original four. Yeah. So that's that's uh, quite the uh, it's quite the roundabout way. You didn't see it. You didn't get hooked on a YouTube video or anything like that. But you were working with uh, Jesper, one of the original four. And that's yeah. how you first got turned on to Swarm Run. Let's let's hear a little bit more about that story. Um, I think I didn't even know about Swarm Run until I met Jesper. Uh, we worked together in the fire department. And um, yeah, I started working with him in 2010, I think, or 11. And he... he quite early told me about this fantastic sport and I was uh, at that time I was trying to uh, focus on triathlon and I was actually I just told him no it's it's too far for me I'm not that uh, I'm not a long distance runner Mm -hmm. I can't do that Um, and uh, he kept he kept uh, coming back to me and saying, are you going to race this year? Are you going to race this year? And this was uh, in the early days of swim run or pretty early where it actually didn't get, yeah, they were looking for people to <laughs> fill right. the yeah. field. Who wants, yeah. who wants to do this crazy thing? <laughs> yeah, especially on the women's side. That was yeah. pretty mm-hmm. thin back then. And he was like, you're just perfect for this race. Why don't you go? And my curiosity was was uh, uh, triggered, of course, mm-hmm. but I kept. Um, I was trying to focus, and I have never been really good at focusing on one thing, and so I, I've, I was trying hard not to uh, lean into all different kind of stuff because I, I knew that if I want to get good at something, I need to give it a some focus and some dedication um but i couldn't really let that uh thing go he yeah he put a bug in your ears what happened it sounds yeah (laughs) well i mean it's it's and then it's funny you say that um you know that you you need to focus on something to to get good at it but you know as as we're sitting now chatting you know, you've done seven world championships <laughs> at this point. So it sounds like at some point. How are you feeling about it now? Yeah, at some <laughs> point he, uh, you know, that message, that message stuck. So what was it that made you finally say, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's see what this is about. Um, I think like the challenge of it to go that distance uh, and especially um the course itself the the journey through the archipelago and being so close to nature and everything i actually when i finally got to uh, to the decision i had um, stopped the uh, triathlon and uh, got into only road biking so mm. uh i wasn't really cut out to do it anymore because uh, i hadn't been swimming or running for a while um but uh, when uh, when i'd been road racing for a couple of years uh i was really longing to get out to nature again um i think i never really appreciated everything on the asphalt uh, as much as i am now doing when racing in nature um it was something miss, missing all the time when I when I was doing triathlon and road racing. I really love the the racing itself, especially in road racing, because um, the team element of it um, really spoke to me. That's why I got into it, mm-hmm. uh, and I had some really fun years. But 
something was missing. And at the end of a season, um, to do something as spectacular as that uh, was kind of, yeah, it some, sounded like a good idea. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like the a good season idea. was mostly over and I could have a little fun. Okay. Wow. So, and this was... Um... This was back in 2013. Is that right? That's when you did your first Atala. Yeah. And uh, and you came in second. Let's just put that out nice. there. Not not that it's about podiums or anything, <laughs> but uh, but what what was that first experience like? Uh, we uh, like back then, swim run wasn't even a word. Um, <laughs> it was Atala, yeah. and then there was. I think one or two other races in Sweden. And uh, yeah, we trained in uh, in the lake uh, near Hellasgården, mm-hmm. uh, which is a famous endurance place in Stockholm. Uh, we trained, so, trained some there, but we never went out to the archipelago to train or anything. And we honestly thought that maybe we're not going to make it. I still have my paddles that I used the first year. And the only thing I wrote on them was the cutoff times. Ah, okay. So I have these paddles with all the cutoffs of Atila. <laughs> and I really That's like funny. to keep them that way because mm-hmm. it says something about where you come from, where I come from, what, what my expectations for the first year was. We really didn't know if we were going to make it. Yeah. Um I had never done anything that long or especially not running. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we, did, we didn't We did know. And we were not there to take a podium. We were just there to, to get to Sandham. To experience it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, you, you were the first female to finish under nine hours, and that was in 2015. So just two years later. Just a couple years <laughs> later. So yeah. you went from having the cutoffs to now you're setting, uh, you know, female course records and things like that. So that, that's uh, quite, the, quite the leap in a few years, um, which, is, which is quite impressive, of course. Now, I'm, I'm more curious about how big your garage is because looking at your Instagram account, you look like it's a commercial for REI or Ad Nature, uh, who's one of your one of your sponsors there. I mean, you got canoes, probably ten different bikes, all sorts of stuff. What what is it that that kind of keeps drawing you back to swim run uh, when you have all these other options to go go out and adventure? Um, I like the mix, and I do a lot of both. Um, but I think it's exactly that thing about swim run that it's a bit closer to nature um i really love biking because it takes you further you can Mm -hmm. like in one training session you can uh you can go out for such a long time and you can go so far uh which you don't really do while running um because yeah it's more tear on the body yeah. So like yesterday we biked for eight hours in the snow and that session running would have been pretty painful. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big day running. <laughs> On the bike, it's just a nice long session. As long as you eat properly, you mm-hmm. you can be out for how long uh, you just find it Keep interesting yourself. i just love how you're just, just casually just casually but, saying you bike for eight hours like, and a snow an eight hour snow bike ride like, no big deal yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just a little ride yeah uh, nice little saturday yeah <laughs> but uh, and that's the thing about swim run you get another element you get much closer to nature you can go it's what most people say about swim run and uh, i agree to that you can go wherever you want to go. And that uh, feeling of nothing stopping you, you can, you come to the water and you just keep going. Mm -hmm. It's, it really is special and uh, it's starting to be a little, uh, yeah, everyone says it. So it's starting to be like, it's 
just it's a thing it's not true it's just yeah it's just a thing yeah but it is really true when you you run over the cliffs you get to the water you can see the next island um yeah that's that's just a very special feeling and you you won't get it from anywhere else but swim run it's true. We Sounds agree. like you just cut a commercial for a swim run, so we're going to take that. Real quick, <laughs> yeah. That nice. Um, you started off your your first few atelas were were in the mixed division, and this year uh, you stood atop the the podium in Malta in the female division, um, and and you're being represented by Arc and Add Nature and everything. Tell me a little bit about how you kind of like. Or, or are you are you rate? Do you find yourself wanting to race more in the female division mixed, or are you just mixing it up? Um, yeah, I've done two races this year with uh, Ulis in the female division, and uh, it's uh, it's been so much fun. And actually, I I didn't really believe in in myself that it would go so great in the female division but yeah Ulis had a confident in me and that really helped me uh to get to the start line and and really to try to go for it and uh, yeah we had a lot of fun we've known each other since my second year 2014 where we both raced mixed category and uh, yeah, she won. <laughs> I was second. And already back then in 2014, she said to me after the race, next year we should uh, leave these guys and go together. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, ever since we've been talking a little on and off about it. Um, but for different reasons, we've had other partners and we still do for, for the big one. Uh, but both. Alex and Peter was unavailable for Engadin. Mm-hmm. So Ulis asked me to go and uh, Engadin has been on my bucket list since uh, they started it. So mm-hmm. um, to go there with Ulis was uh, a no-brainer because we also uh, wanted to go out to do some adventures in the mountain before. And not everyone would be into go out climbing the day before the race. But <laughs> right. I and yeah. I knew Ulis would be so. It was a good, so, good uh, so amazing partner. Oh, so amazing! You took the bot. You did. You did some other fun adventures before. Yeah, you know, the just Inconnect. climbing and no big deal. Probably, probably went yeah. biking around St. <laughs> yeah. Moritz and stuff. Um. So, so Engadin. I mean, we that race has captivates us a lot. We did a course preview on that race last year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly the cows. Is though. it uh, is it as amazing as it looks in the photos? <laughs> the postcards. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it was better. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, it was really beautiful, and uh, um, the it's it's a special feeling where you get challenged by the nature a lot more than by the race, uh, because going both the uh, elevation and the altitude will uh, will have will. Push you, and whammy, you have yeah. to push, push through that. And yeah, we uh, we had a little trouble, or especially me, I had a little trouble with the altitude uh, in the beginning. And Ulis helped me through that, uh, made sure I could rest up a bit uh, while she was pulling me uh, on the flatter section after the first climb. Um, and then the lakes are very cold, so Ulis had some trouble with the cold uh and yeah i helped the team push through that so it, <clears throat> we did a really good teamwork and um when nature is your biggest challenge rather than the other competitors um yeah. the teamwork gets even more important yeah well it seems like you figured it out because you guys ended up uh ended up winning that race so congratulations <laughs> and thanks we we talk about too that's the thing that we really like about swim run specifically is that it's rarely i mean not to say that everyone that's shooting for the podium isn't racing against other teams but it's less about how are we going to do against this team and it's how are we going to do against this course on this day going through nature and 
hopefully we have a good day and we could put stuff together and beat some other teams if that's your goal. But it, it is mostly against sort of the course or against completing the adventure, not not like uh, like a road race or something, a half marathon or whatever, where, oh, what time did you get? What place? It's very speed and, and everything oriented. So um, that's what we, you know, one of the things that we enjoy about it so much. Yeah, I totally agree. It's complex in that way because you need to manage the the cold or the current or the waves or hills and altitude or whatnot. So uh, it will be about you, your partner, your teamwork and the course and the other people around. If you just do you uh, and have a good day, you you might end up being before them on Sandham or right, right Uta not. or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And especially like this year's Uta really panned out that way, I think. Yeah, let's let's talk about that a little bit. So so this year's Atala, the mix category, um was as tight as mm-hmm. we've seen and people told us in, in recent memory where the teams were it was really it was really a, a battle. It was really a race, even even late into the into the race. The um, podium, yeah, is that the sure. first time that um that you've done Atala where it's been that close amongst the mixed teams? Um it's the first time that it was so many teams involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh but it's been close before. Uh, we had, I had three years in a row passing teams on at the end of Una or even later. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and also, I think I've been involved in the, no, what I, what I know of, the only sprint ever on Atula where we chased uh, Adriel and Eva up the hill finishing 20 seconds uh, after them. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. If that course would have been 50 meters longer, Adriel and Eva told us we would have won. (laughs) (laughs) How did the legs feel about that last minute surge? I'm sure they were protesting. Um, Not uh, as much as you would think, because when you race up that hill, Seeing another team uh, is much easier than just making your way up that horrible hill yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if the motivation you can focus on on that back you see of the first team, um, yeah, I have had years where that hill felt much longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mountain. Yeah. So you, you yeah. just you had the proper, uh, you know, you had the proper carrot in front of you to to motivate you and to, yeah. to shut out most of the most of the hurt that was going on. Yep. Yep. Um. Let Let me Let me ask you about. So you know, when we speak with you know Michael Amell and sort of the race directors at Atala, you know, you really get a sense that the they're, the roots of swim run are in adventure racing, and you are a world class adventure racer. So, can we talk a little bit about? Can you tell us a little bit about like how you feel like your adventure racing sort of pedigree helps you with swim run, um, and and if that's like a two way street, does swim run help you with adventure racing as well? Yeah, it actually does go both ways. Um, Coming from adventure racing, or actually I, I started swim running before adventure racing, but mm. what I take away from adventure racing into any other kind of racing is um, that uh, you know every year when you're standing on a start line, you know that not all these teams are going to finish. Mm-hmm. Some of these teams will be DNFs. But I, I know that's not going to be me um, because that the confidence that comes from adventure racing, that you know that you can endure anything. Like it's, it's going to be uh, tough and you're going to be very tired, of course, from the speed of a uh, swim run. But you know that you can handle anything mm. else. Um, 
nothing is going to be as horrible as <laughs> some days of adventure raising. Um, and I also am very comfortable with cold or heat or nothing really bothers me. And I think that comes from adventure racing or it comes from me and I'm just cut out to do adventure racing. I don't know, actually. Maybe a little uh, both. Because, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, but you learn, you also learn a lot about teamwork from adventure racing. Yeah, because te- teams of four usually, When you right? race four people together for such a long time, and people are at their worst. Mm -hmm. You learn a lot about how to um, do things together. Yeah, overcoming adversity. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And helping other people overcome theirs. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Times times three. And letting go of your own pride, because that's often the biggest problem. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we felt that on a very small level when we did a race this year at Orcas Island where Chipper was having a, a four-hour Less than bonk. stellar day. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was tough to, to, in the moment to, to kind of deal with everything that was going on. And it was only afterwards where I think we both appreciated the experience a lot more because we learned so much about each other as a team and... And uh, we definitely are taking that with us into whatever race we do in the future, just mm-hmm. having that experience. Is that what you find as well? Like, you know, you've done so many different things. You have all this variety of experience. Is that something that you can draw on? You mentioned that, you know, you always feel like you're confident that you can survive a swim run because you've done these amazing, <laughs> difficult en- feats of endurance. Um, is, is, that, is that sort of confidence something that, that keeps developing for you? Um, or are you just like, yep, no problem. Atala, I got you. So, you know, it's like, this is going to be a problem this year. Um, like, I think, um, uh, I'm still very nervous about like when coming to the start, um, for Atala, because the race is still going to be rock hard and Mm -hmm. I, I think it only gets harder for every year. Um, the level just gets higher and higher. Um, and yeah, you can see that on the times and especially if you look not only on the winning times, but like the top 10 times or something, mm-hmm. it's it, the competition gets higher. So for the race itself, um, I am very humble and I, I, come every year feeling like this is the year I'm not going to be on the podium because look at these guys, they are right. fast. Um, but I'm not, I'm confident in that whatever happens during the race, as soon as you get to Bindalsa, it's more about you and your partner and and the nature as we were talking about earlier. And that part, um, I think... For every trouble you have, you you learn something, and uh, there's always going to be trouble during a race. Um, right. The longer it is, the more trouble. trouble's gonna <laughs> find your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. That's it's true. funny you say it that way. We have, we've had a coach on who um, Mario Ferroli, who one of his his sort of taglines is is um, you know it's not necessarily about what the finish time is it's how you deal with the adversity along the way and i think that that's probably something that holds really true for swim run and just the way you're describing it it's a yeah it's a very long day you have to respect the distance but you know what decisions are you making throughout the race that will either help or uh, or hurt your performance yeah and 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 also to actually do decisions uh, mm-hmm. actively um, and not let let the race happen to you, right? And mm. you can see that in the mixed category. Uh, that's exactly what Victor and Desiria did. They were really determined to do their own race, and so they did, and that was successful. Uh, we did too, and uh, that was not as successful, but for us. 
successful enough, we were super happy with yeah. our performance. I and mean, when you cross the finish yeah, we, line, you guys were like on the ground. It looked like you left it all out there this year for sure. Yeah, we did. I think it was uh, looking into the live after mm-hmm. I saw that all the mixed teams were at the same place. And that, <laughs> that really made me even more stoked about my own performance because yeah we we left it all out there and but so did all the others and seeing that um yeah made me really happy because to be among those six or seven teams that really went for it and uh, standing on that podium where everyone wanted to be um in that competition was something special Awesome. Well, it is 2022 and you have, when you have these adventure races and swim runs, talk us through a little bit about how you kind of think about planning your season from a quote unquote race or like an event perspective. Do you kind of lay down the adventure races first, pop in some swim runs, or you have a couple, you know, you know, you're going to do a Tala, you know, you're going to do Malta or whatever. Uh, How are you thinking about uh, this coming year for, endurance racing um it's it pans out a little different for every every year this year it's definitely Ertula, which uh, sets the rules for the rest of the season and mm-hmm. uh, nice because you also because it's easy you always know the day you know when it and, is yeah <laughs> yeah you know what it is <laughs> <laughs> and what it takes also um yeah and then the adventure races are of a long really long stuff will have to uh, dictate the rest because they take a lot of preparation, but also a lot of recovery. Um, It's actually a fun thing is after an adventure race, you will get sort of a peak in performance where you get a kickback from doing a lot of hours in a really mm-hmm. short time uh, or I, I feel that way. I've learned that I get that kickback as long as you didn't get very sick or hurt, mm-hmm. um, which always is a possibility too. Um, but you never know exactly when that peak is going to come. So it might be good or it might be super, super bad. And you, yeah, it's hard to calculate and place your next race at that peak. Uh, I've managed to do that a few times and it really worked well, but it's hard to plan. It's more of a lucky shot. Uh, So I try not to put too much trust into it. Um, But this this year's big race um, will actually be Cape Epic. Oh, uh, nice. You are the first ones outside me and my teammates to learn. This is an exclusive, wow. Low Tide Boys exclusive. Okay. I love it. Yeah. We'll be on the endurance <laughs> press wire in no, no time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, no, it's, I'm happy to, to share it through you and with you. Uh, now, me and my bike friend Ingrid Schallström will uh, be, uh, if... Uh, COVID will let us, uh, oh, be, yeah. we will be racing Cape Epic in South Africa, uh, mountain bike stage race. Um, I mean, it's, it's a little special with stage race because it will be both very long, but also very fast. So, yeah. yeah, it will be a new challenge. That sounds, I mean, you know, epic is uh, already used in the title yeah. but it does sound it does sound pretty pretty amazing um now i want to ask you, you you kind of just mentioned this in passing but i want to drill down because we are hoping to make it through the ranking system to get into atala this year and you mentioned that you know having atala in september that you kind of know what it takes to to prepare for that can you give us some insight yeah, what into what actually does it take <laughs> in case we're lucky enough to be able to line up for that one yeah of course um yeah i really i root for you so i really hope to see you on the start line oh, thank you. um in the preparations what i find most important it's to uh first of all do the running volume over time you don't necessarily need to 
and be doing some super long stuff right about now, but you need to build your week volume um, Mm -hmm. early on uh, because that will, that's what makes you uh, powerful and uh, gets you to uh, adapt and endure the training coming later. Um, So that's the first thing. And second thing is to, uh, to do some really long stuff uh, throughout uh, the summer. So you prepare for, uh, for the distance. Um, And uh, both physically and mentally, I believe something special happens after six hours. So mm. if you can push yourself through a session that would be around that time, maybe once or twice before, I think you will gain a lot from that. And I think rather do some really long ones, just a few, than doing some half ass stuff every week. Mm-hmm. Um but um but once or, or twice i think is enough because if you start doing them too often then it will take away from your weekly volume and right. uh, then you will end up not gaining so much from them anyway um and also train as much as you can together and really try out everything gear wise before but you have braced together a lot so i think you got got it all figured out but well, uh, well you see so many never. teams coming to the start line and they are they don't have their shit together <laughs> they come to the start line of the biggest challenge of their career and the world championships and they start cutting their feather or uh, oh, no. <laughs> applying uh, new stuff to their uh, paddles or whatnot. And that's just unnecessary because you knew this was coming. So yeah, you could yeah. be ready. Okay. Well, those are three great points. I have them written down here. <laughs> I was yeah. going to ask for a point of clarification because you said some <laughs> long stuff and just earlier, it wasn't even, you know, 20 or 30 minutes ago, you told us about it an eight hour bike ride in the snow that you did. So I was trying to get a little barometer when you say some really long stuff. What, what do you mean? But, um, like 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of days. Um, so yeah, Chris and I, you know, luckily we, before we caught the swimman bug full, full on, we were doing some ultra marathons and stuff. So we have a couple longer days, uh, to, to pull from there. But yeah, I think it sounds like a couple good mountain mountainous trail running adventures seems like uh yeah. would be would be worth it there six hours or so we'll we'll see yeah that sounds great and if you've done uh long stuff before coming to Atea, you you are ahead of me where i was my first time so yeah well it seems like you know it didn't take long for you to uh um you know, to, 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 to ramp up, <laughs> yeah, to, to get, to get into the swing of things. Now, you know, you've done, you've done the world championship seven times. Um, what keeps you coming back to, to this race? Is it just the magic of it or are you, you know, you want to win it? What's a, you know, tell us deep down, what, what is it that, that keeps you coming back to this event? It's the magic of it. Um, I was away one year and I really missed it. So uh, I tried to leave. No, I didn't really. <laughs> just can't quit you, uh, <laughs> Just can't quit I didn't really want to leave. I just uh, tried some something different for a year uh, while I was uh, hurt. Uh, so I couldn't run as much as I wanted. So I, I got into some biking stuff. Uh, but that's a whole other story. Um, no, I, I, it's the magic of it. The, um, the actual thing going through the whole archipelago archipelago like that. Um, it's just so much beauty throughout that course. And um, one of my favorite parts of the course is when you go down to the first swim and in every breath, you can see 
the the sun rising and the lights like it's uh, brighter and you can really see the day starting just mm-hmm. as you for every breath you can see it coming and then i really love the run on vindalsa which is the first one mm-hmm. uh, so you know you'll get a great start uh, for the day and okay yeah it's just very special everyone who's there even the top teams uh know that this is about a lot more than racing so it's a very special feeling among the teams that morning and and also at the finish line everyone gained something from right. it mm-hmm. and even the teams that didn't really have a good day were challenged hard probably even harder than the ones who got the perfect day and yeah there's that's what we came from for even if you're disappointed with your with your race i think most of us came for the challenge and yeah, yeah you won't be disappointed with that that's such a healthy perspective to have on yeah. it too where it's like yeah you want to have a great day you want to you know express your fitness and you know have something to show for all the training but it's it's all about just just surviving it and and sort of dealing with what comes at you and 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 I know if if we're lucky to get there this year if not I think next year will be much more likely um yeah I think I'm always going to try to keep in my mind um to just enjoy <laughs> what's happening <laughs> around me rather than just being like oh my god we got you know let's keep pressing we can't embarrass yeah. ourselves here or something like that but just sort of yeah like i'm definitely going to be looking for that sunrise i think you only get first one first. Uh, good now yeah. let's hope for a for a year with with good weather then yeah hey you know what that's so part you'll of see it. the sunrise if it's good oh, or yeah. bad you just got a deal um <laughs> yeah i always hope for the bad weather because yeah. i yeah, think that suits me better of course it does. Of and course it does. Lemon always, uh, he always uh, uh, laugh at me and say, yeah, you, you hope for the bad weather, right? And uh, yeah, just <laughs> the better, the, the more waves and the more cold and current and everything. It was just better for me. Yeah. It just makes the it. day so much more epic. Yeah. yeah. That's all. That's all I want from it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a better Instagram photo. <laughs> this is what it all boils. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, Marika. I mean, like you know, we meant it at the beginning. You know, we're huge fans of yours, and you know, seeing your Instagram and seeing you know just the passion that you put into everything that you do, I think it's really inspiring for us. Absolutely. And as you know, a couple of swim runners from California, um, you know, it just really motivates us to to kind of see what we're capable of. So we just want to thank you for, you know, for everything that 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 you're doing and all the people that you're inspiring in the sport. Um, and and yeah, I mean, just also want to thank you for for coming on the show th- this week and start kicking off our, our third year of the show in 2022 with, with having you on. It's been a huge honor for us. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's really uh, great to hear because inspiring people like that is what I aim for with all these crazy. Uh, so I hope it, it doesn't come out as just what is her deal more yeah. than <laughs> uh, inspiring you to seek what you are capable of. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm really grateful grateful to hear that. Uh, and it's been really fun to to be on your show. Yeah, thank right. you. Well, thank you. And, of course, best of luck to you and Atala this year and the Cape Epic uh, mountain bike race. Yeah, We're whatever other, you yeah. know, for that 48-hour, adventure. 72-hour adventures you're, you're going you're gonna to do next year, this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will be some for sure. Um, <laughs> it's been uh, a little low on the adventure racing uh, circuit part sure. for me mm-hmm. so yeah i'm gonna i'm really looking forward to get back into it awesome awesome well once again thank you so much for coming on marika it's been a, it's been a it's been a lot of fun thanks well that's it for this week's episode thanks so much for listening to the show 
make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the support of Swim Run. Sign up for our newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any suggestions for the show or questions for us, send us a DM or an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of all our swim run activities, podcasts, and other stuff. Yeah, other stuff. Other way stuff. To, way to keep it PG. Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Go for a run. Then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then another run. And then just keep going. So you're done. So you're done. Or maybe can't stop. 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 <laughs> <laughs>